Vanuatu is an island nation of 200,000 people in the South Pacific. It's an archipelago of 85 volcanic islands. Most are surrounded by fringing coral reefs. Coral is not a rock, it's alive. When it's healthy, it's a nurturing environment for spectacular marine life. The living reef is also a barrier against the pounding sea and frequent cyclones. But the reefs are under attack from overfishing and lack of options for proper waste disposal, a headache for all small island states as they embrace the consumer society. And this is one of the nastiest threats, discarded lead acid and alkaline batteries. There are no landfills, so they're thrown onto the reefs. On two of Vanuatu's smallest islands, Nguna and Pele, the local villagers have enlisted the assistance of US Peace Corps volunteer Christopher Bartlett, and they've come up with a solution to the pollution. The corals are recovering, and the villagers are saving money. The key to this unfolding success story was revitalizing the islanders' traditional resource management practices. They've created Vanuatu's first ever marine protected area, and they found a solar-powered solution to one of the biggest threats to the magnificent corals and fish population. Most of the islands of Vanuatu are the tips of great undersea volcanoes. They form a line in the Coral Sea, 800 kilometers long. That's too great an obstacle for an impoverished country to have even the semblance of an electricity grid. Vanuatu is battery powered, as Chris Bartlett discovered during his posting to the islands. People rely on AA and B-sized batteries to power modern day appliances, such as shortwave radios and torches. That means the 1,000 people who live on Nguna use up an astonishing 50,000 batteries every year. When they're used up, they're thrown away. The acid inside is highly toxic. Many batteries contain mercury and lead, which can cause brain defects. Others have strong alkalis, which may result in severe chemical burns. In time, this leaks out and contaminates the surroundings. The reefs around Vanuatu, already stressed by warming oceans, are particularly susceptible to the battery's toxic effects. When you look at this place, I was, I was a small boy. There's plenty of fish around here. Yeah? But since uh, then, the plenty of people living here, then the fish, number of fish goes down. There's not much flat land on Vanuatu for farming. So the islanders have to look to the sea and its fish as the main source of protein. We are like a, it's a fishing farm, right? Uh, but we only got a little bit of uh, poultry and uh, piggeries, but they're very little, yes? But the fish, what does I'm really want fish? <laughs> yeah. With fish catches falling rapidly, the village chiefs realized something needed to be done, and quickly. In the past, the chiefs would declare a taboo, equivalent of a complete ban on certain areas of reef for up to three years enough time to allow fish stocks to recover. However, overfishing was only part of the problem. Pollution from the old batteries was killing the reef from within. Batteries are, are a mobile uh, source of electricity, so they're used for everything. Anything and everything that you could think of in a household uh, that would take electricity in the West is used, we use batteries here. Um, and on the island, there's no garbage disposal. There's no recycling at all. So everything that we use goes back into the environment. Um, plastics, sure, animals can choke on it, and it can, it can become a problem in the marine ecosystem. But batteries, in fact, are releasing toxins uh, when they're thrown into the environment. So we were seeing areas of reef uh, that were used as battery disposal grounds that were just poisoned out. Uh, coral was not growing there. There were no fish living. In fact, fish were, were toxic to eat uh, in those areas. So it was a significant problem. Not only are the old batteries poisonous, they're expensive items to a community where the average family has to manage on less than a thousand dollars a year. We found that of an income of about 15 US dollars a week for the average family, they were spending a good third of that on batteries, which um, was just unnecessary, really. So things like school fees, education, uh, household improvements, clothes, those are the things that are being sacrificed in order to be able to use power and torches and radios. 1,200 batteries a month were ending up here, alongside other rubbish and a relentless rise in human activity on the reef.
Vanuatu's human population is increasing at 1.5% a year, meaning more mouths to feed and more pressure on slender resources. This trend has left small island communities heavily dependent on foreign aid elsewhere in the world. But in Vanuatu, enough of the traditional decision-making structure exists to take action across the board. We try to do something that will protect our environment and our fish and crabs and all, all these places like that. So we had a meeting. I'm a chairman of the, of the Council of Chiefs. Yeah. So I decided to, to establish this um, protected area, especially in our family. But this, this village, they work together and they respect the chief. Whatever the chief said, they all go to it. And they, 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 they unite here. They stay together. The chiefs are the heart and soul of this project. Um, when they take a decision to block an area of reef, there's no one that would go against the decision of the chief. It was the chiefs that sat down originally to say, there's a problem. Our people are not getting enough resources. They're, they're, they're facing a hard time uh, in their livelihoods. What can we do about it as chiefs to solve that problem? And that's how the Marine Protected Area was born. The community agreed that if the reef is to be protected, they'd have to give up land rights to create one jointly managed Marine Protected Area, or MPA, of over 3,000 hectares, the first one on Vanuatu. Using the ancient custom of taboo, the chiefs proclaimed a section of the reef permanently out of bounds, with the aim of seeing the fish population come bounding back. So this traditional system has been on, going on for centuries. Uh, so the Marine Protected Area system just takes it a step further. Uh, rather than having this ephemeral three to five year taboo, it's now a small area permanently protected. And it does the same job, um, but it's significant increases in resources and stock numbers, um, and even abundance uh, and biodiversity of marine resources. With the reef under unified community management, the way opened to address the pollution from the batteries. And the solution was all around. The one thing Vanuatu has a lot of, sunlight. A pilot project funded by the community, the MPA, the Chiefs and local donor agencies, showed that solar panels could easily supply the energy to recharge batteries. The total cost of the system, including the installation of the solar battery system, came to 17,000 US dollars. The MPA team runs regular classes to educate school children about the dangers of discarding old batteries. They encourage the kids to collect the old batteries from the reef at low tide. And failing that, there's always snorkeling equipment for the more intrepid to dive for those in deeper waters. As an incentive, prizes are given for the most batteries collected. This is child labour with a heart. There are benefits for the adults too. It's introduced a rechargeable batteries, which, uh, which is very beneficial to the, to the communities. I mean, it is much cheaper for them, and uh, it's also help keep the environment clean. Our plan, if we were to win this competition, is to use the money to create a radio show. Everybody in Vanuatu uses radios, and that's their means of getting information and their means of uh, hearing about the rest of the world. So the Marine Protected Area would like to create a radio show in the local language of Vanuatu 
that would be broadcast to every island. In part two, it's Planet Organic for the birds of Spain.